Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is September 28th. This is the Biblical Day of Atonement, a very important day in the calendar of God. This is also part 31 of my series called The Mystery of the Beast. Today's video is a hard one to do. It is called The Bowls of Wrath. For the last couple of weeks at least, the Lord has had me looking at scriptures dealing with the Day of Wrath and the Cup of Wrath, the time of God's wrath. Why do you want the day of the Lord? Prophets asked in the past. That day is darkness and not light. See, we have come now to the day of the Lord. And as you see, it is dark and not light. We see chaos everywhere. Once again, I want to admonish you, encourage you to listen to all of Dana Coverstone's dreams, his recounting of his dreams, and his latest video was a vision that he had. These are very important because they are telling us about things that are taking place and about to take place in a mighty way. I don't think too many people yet have seen exactly where we are in history, exactly where we are. Brace yourself. The Lord kept telling Dana in his dreams, brace yourself. The storm is coming. Donald Trump said in 2017, this is the calm before the storm. The storm has arrived, but yet not in its intensity yet. The book of Revelation you might rename after you hear this video today. It's the book of wrath. The book of Revelation is all about the wrath of God. It all deals with the time that we live in now. Amazingly, however, God wrote the book in such a way that people always believed that it could apply to them. For the last 2,000 years, every generation believed that the book of Revelation could apply to them. Today, we live at the time of fulfillment of the book of Revelation. We're going to start by looking at the references to the word wrath in the book of Revelation. And it's amazing. The word occurs 11 times once with respect to Satan, ten times with respect to God. Ten times, ten. A number of completeness, just as you have the ten horns on the head of the beast, the ten kings. It's not just ten, it's the, it's the whole number of kings that have now aligned themselves with Donald Trump to destroy Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great is also, you could think of Babylon the Great as being the sixth beast because the sixth beast is still alive. Anyway, let's get to Revelation chapter 6. Verse 12. When he, Jesus, opened the sixth seal, I looked, and behold, there was a great earthquake. 
And the sun became black as sackcloth. The full moon became like blood. And the stars of the sky fell to the earth as the fig tree sheds its winter fruit when shaken by a gale. The sky vanished like a scroll that is being rolled up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth and the great ones and the generals and the rich and the powerful and everyone, slave and free, hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains, calling to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him who is seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who can stand? Who can stand? Who can stand in the day of wrath? I hope to reveal something of that today. Let's continue. Revelation chapter 11. Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who sit on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, who is and who was, for you have taken your great power and begun to reign. The nations raged, but your wrath came. And the time for the dead to be judged and for rewarding your servants, the prophets and saints and those who fear your name, both small and great, and for destroying the destroyers of the earth. Then God's temple in heaven was opened and the ark of his covenant was seen within his temple. There were flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and heavy hail. Two things will be happening at the same time. One is that God's wrath will come, verse 18, here in Revelation 11. But at the same time, the time for rewarding your servants, the prophets and saints. The saints are the Kodeshim. The saints are the overcomers. So the time of their reward happens at the time of God's wrath. It must be so. It must be so because otherwise no flesh could remain alive on this earth. Now we'll go to the next occurrence of wrath. The next one is Revelation 12, 12, which deals with Satan's wrath. But we're going to go past that now to Revelation chapter 14. It's interesting, Revelation 14 is a really amazing chapter in the Bible and, and in the book of Revelation because it begins with 144,000. These are the Kodeshim. What we're seeing in, at the beginning of Revelation 14 is the glorification of the Kodeshim. It, it is, it's what people have called the rapture, but it's not for everyone who believes in Jesus. It's not for the entire church. It's only for the 144,000. I'm thinking that it will be my next video that I really get into the 144,000 in more detail. This chapter 14 is filled with, with so many things. It's in verses 10 and 19 that we have the wrath of God mentioned. I'll read eight here first. Another angel, a second, followed, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She who made all nations drink the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality. 
In this chapter, Babylon has fallen. But as we read in later chapters, we're going to see that Babylon has not yet fallen. So you, you have to see that the book of Revelation is not written in such a way as it goes from here and then here and then here in a timeline. It doesn't work that way. It's very important to see that. Verse 9 says, And another angel, a third, followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and its image and receives a mark on his forehead or on his hand, he also will drink the wine of God's wrath, poured full strength into the cup of his anger, and he will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And then we have the harvest of the earth. Starting in verse 14. Then I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and seated on the cloud, one like a son of man, with a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. And another angel came out of the temple, calling with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, Put in your sickle and reap, for the hour to reap has come, and the harvest of the earth is fully ripe. So he who sat on the cloud swung his sickle across the earth, and the earth was reaped. Then another angel came out of the temple in heaven, and he too had a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, the angel who has authority over the fire, and he called with a loud voice to the one who had the sharp sickle, Put in your sickle and gather the clusters from the vine of the earth, for its grapes are ripe. So the angel swung his sickle across the earth and gathered the grape harvest of the earth and threw it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden outside the city and blood flowed from the winepress. As horse, as high as a horse's bridle for 1600 stadia. Now remember, we're seeing parables here. We're seeing images. Things will not look exactly like this when it occurs. It's a picture of things that are about to occur, to occur, of God's wrath that's coming. Then after Revelation 14, <clears throat> we get to Revelation 15, 1, 15, 7, 16, 1, and 16, 19, which are all dealing with the bowls of wrath. Revelation 15, 1 begins, Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and amazing, seven angels with seven plagues, which are the last, for with them the wrath of God is finished. Then in Revelation 15, 7, And one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls full of the wrath of God, who lives forever and ever. Then Revelation 16, 1 says, Then I heard a loud voice from the temple, telling the seven angels, Go and pour out on the earth the seven bowls of the wrath of God. And as Revelation chapter 16 is winding up, in verse 19, we see the great city was split into three parts. This is Babylon the Great. And the cities of the nations fell, and God remembered Babylon the Great to make her drain the cup of the wine of the fury of his wrath. After this, after Revelation 16, you have Revelation 17 and 18 that are all dealing with the calling of the eighth head of the beast to destroy Babylon the Great, and then chapter 18, describing the destruction of Babylon the Great, and then chapter 19, showing the marriage supper of the Lamb, and then after that, you have Christ returning, and from his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. This shows you that the consummation of the day of wrath does not occur until Jesus returns. It's very important to see these things so that we understand something about the time that we're living in. 
Now, I want to take you to a chapter in the book of Jeremiah to begin to ready you for what is about to take place and what I'm going to do next. Jeremiah 25, verse 15 says this, Thus the Lord, the God of Israel, said to me, Take from my hand this cup of the wine of wrath and make all the nations to whom I send you drink it. They shall drink and stagger and be crazed because of the sword that I am sending among them. So I took the cup from the Lord's hand and made all the nations to whom the Lord sent me drink it. Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, its kings and officials, to make them a desolation and a waste, a hissing and a curse, as at, as at this day. Really, the wrath of God can be said to have begun at the destruction of Jerusalem back in around 600 B.C. Then Pharaoh, king of Egypt, his servants, his officials, all his people, and all the mixed tribes among them, all the kings of the land of Uz, and all the kings of the land of the Philistines, Ashkelon, Gaza, Ekron, and the remnant of Ashdod, Edom, Moab, and the sons of Ammon, and all the kings of Tyre, all the kings of Sidon, and, all, and the kings of the coastland across the sea. Now God is describing all of the nations that then existed at the time that Israel, that Judah existed at 600 B.C. Dedan, Tema, Buzz, and all who cut the corners of the hair, all the kings of Arabia, and all the kings of the mixed tribes who dwell in the desert, all the kings of Zimri, all the kings of Elam. Elam, that was Iran what we call Iran today, the Persians, the place of Persia, and all the kings of Medea. See, Persia, Babylon was coming to destroy Jerusalem at, at this time. And after, Babel, after 70 years, God sent the kings of Elam and Medea to destroy Babylon's kingdom. Verse 26, all the kings of the north far and near, one after another, and all the kingdoms of the world that are on the face of the earth. All the kingdoms of the world that are on the face of the earth. And after them, the king of Babylon shall drink. Oh, what? After them? So what is this saying? It's talking about Babylon the Great. See, we need to learn to how to interpret the scripture to know when we're dealing with times that were 2,600 years ago, or times that are now. This is dealing with now. Because Babylon, the great, is about to drink. Then you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Drink, be drunk and vomit, fall and rise no more because of the sword that I am sending among you. And if they refuse to accept the cup from your hand to drink, then you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, You must drink. You must drink. And that's the word of the Lord for today. I declare, You must drink. It is time it is time for the cup of wrath to come forth. And this is a hard word. For behold, I begin to work disaster at the city that is called by my name. And shall you go unpunished? You shall not go unpunished. For I am summoning a sword against all the inhabitants of the earth, declares the Lord of hosts. You therefore shall prophesy against them all of these words and say to them, The Lord will roar from on high and from his holy habitation utter his voice. He will roar mightily against his fold and shout like those who tread grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. The clamor will resound to the ends of the earth, for the Lord has an indictment against the nations. He is entering into judgment with all flesh, and the wicked he will put to the sword, declares the Lord. The wicked he will put to the sword, declares the Lord. The wicked he will put to the sword, declares the Lord. Have you seen the wickedness? 
foaming at the mouth as they kill the righteous? Have you seen the wicked? Jesus told us, when they blaspheme the Holy Spirit, there is no longer any hope for them. They cannot be saved, either in this age or the age to come. But there is an age after that. Jesus wasn't speaking of that, and I'm not going to speak of it now. But they have passed the line of no return. They cannot repent. Do you remember when Rand Paul and his wife were attacked when they left the White House a few weeks ago? And his wife said that as she looked in their eyes, she saw nothing but hatred, that those people did not even see her and her husband as human beings. They would have killed her and Rand Paul. There was no love. There was no mercy. There was only blind hatred. Blind hatred of truth. And that's where the world now is. God, God has let it go this long so that people who are unconvinced would get off the fence. How long will you halt between two opinions, says the Lord? How many of you Christians still say you're going to vote for Joe Biden? How many of you Christians voted for Hillary Clinton? How many of you still say you're Christian and you vote for those who would kill the baby in the womb and even destroy the baby as it's being born and even kill it after it's born? How many of you still support the pedophiles the child sacrificers, the satanic ritual abusers. Come out of her while you still can, says the Lord, because if you don't, you will partake of her plagues and her judgments. And that time is now and it's almost too late for you. Today is the day of atonement. Be atoned Look to the blood of Jesus Christ and ask for wisdom. Ask for him to give you a spirit of understanding. Because I tell you, you have taken the mark of the beast and you don't even know it. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, disaster is going forth from nation to nation, and a great tempest is stirring from the furthest parts of the earth. A great tempest. That is the storm of the Lord. That is the storm Donald Trump was talking about. And those pierced by the Lord on that day shall extend from one end of the earth to the other. They shall not be lamented or gathered or buried They shall be dung on the face of the ground. Wail, you shepherds, and cry out and roll in ashes, you lords of the flock. You should have known. You should have known better. For the days of your slaughter and dispersion have come, and you shall fall like a choice vessel. No refuge will remain for the shepherds, nor escape for the lords of the flock. A voice, the cry of the shepherds, and the wail of the lords of the flock. For the Lord is laying waste their pasture, and the peaceful folds are devastated because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Like a lion, he has left his lair, for their land has become a waste because of the sword of the oppressor and because of his fierce anger. Jeremiah chapter 25. Read it and reread it, beginning at verse 15. Now, for those of you who don't know, I have a website called Zadik.us, Living Waters. It's my teaching website. I have hundreds of articles on it. So if you feel like you need to learn some things about God, and about the Word of God, about the Bible, I would encourage you to read some things as much as you can in the time left that you have. There is not much time left. But the reason I'm sharing it with you is, you know, I don't have all knowledge. I don't understand all things. 
And suddenly I was seeing that the book of Revelation was full of things dealing with the day of wrath and the cup of wrath. And yet I considered I don't even know how to interpret Revelation chapter 16, which is the book, which is the chapter of the bowls of wrath. How can I teach on the day of wrath when I don't even understand the bowls of wrath? Well, the Lord brought to my recollection, to my mind, that I had posted many years ago things by Prophet J. Leland Earls. Click on that and read it all. Read it all. Because the church does not begin to understand what that man prophesied. And on that page that you will get to when you push that link is this page. Thy wrath is come. I will show you where that is just so you can find it. So if you push the link Prophet J. Leland Earls, then it will take you to this page, the prophetic writings of J. Leland Earls. Then you have to go down quite a while. He has a lot of writings and they are well worth reading. Then he has this, Thy wrath is come. So that's what I clicked on in order to get this. And now, now, we are going to read about chapter 16 of the book of Revelation. Get ready. Thy wrath has come. Now this is the prophecy that God gave J. Leland Earls. God does not speak to me like he speaks. He spoke to J. Leland Earls. He does not tell me things that I then go and say, thus says the Lord. Instead, what he does is he, he speaks to me quietly as I read his word so that I understand the word. He gives me understanding as I read the word of God. That is one of the gifts that God gave me. And that's how I was able to understand things concerning the mystery of the beast. But I didn't understand Revelation 16. And now let's understand it together. Shall I not show you, says the, says the Lord, that which will take place as the seventh trumpet sounds its final blast? We're there. Shall I not show you, says the Lord, that which will take place as the seventh trumpet sounds its final blast? For the seventh trumpet is the last, and during its sounding, that which I have determined for this age will reach its consummation. What is it, says the Lord? You shall notice that the third woe is connected with the blowing of the seventh trumpet. Reading Revelation 11, 14 and 15. This third woe does not come at the inception of the seventh trumpet, but at its close. The seventh trumpet sounds for three and a half years, during which all preceding six trumpets are consummating their sounding. The first and second woes are fulfilled in the events which transpire as a result of the sounding of the fifth and sixth trumpets. But the third woe is reserved until the very end of the age, as the seventh trumpet issues its final blast. Now consider, says the Lord, and I will reveal to you the fulfillment of the third woe. Is it not written that when the seventh angel sounds his final blast, that the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of the Lord and of his anointed? 
That's in Revelation 11, 15. See, what we're seeing is how the book of Revelation is not linear. There's a little here that goes here and a little bit there that comes back here. So we have to, we have to rethink the way that we even think about the book of Revelation. This requires two things. First, his anointed ones, those who are to be, those who are to make up his glorified body to rule with him over the kingdoms of the earth, will have to be received of him into the heavenly kingdom. He's talking about the Kodeshim. He's talking about the 144,000 that we saw in Revelation chapter 14. Secondly, all of the opposition to his rule will have to be completely eliminated from the earth so that he will be received by people who are crying out for his rule and who will welcome his return to take up the reins of government. This is critical, and we see it now. How could anyone rule over these lawless beasts that we see everywhere in America right now and that surely are all around the world? Consider now, and I will show you how this will take place. Leland Earls wrote this over 50 years ago. There is no way that he could have seen what we see today except for in the spirit. So bear that in mind. This is not a recent writing. This was written over 50 years ago. Back when I was 15 years old or even younger. And in my life, I've seen everything come to pass. At the close of the tribulation, just before the seven vials of wrath are poured out on the earth, the sounding of the seventh trumpet shall vibrate to the pitch of those who are to be resurrected to glorified life, and the dead in Christ shall be raised. That's 1 Thessalonians 4.16. Then shall the living saints also respond to the trumpet sound and be translated to meet the Lord in the air. That's 1 Thessalonians 4.17. Immediately following their glorification, their resurrection, their transition to a glorified body. Immediately following, the seven vials of wrath are poured out, constituting the fulfillment of the third woe. So notice that the glorification of the saints occurs before the vials of wrath are poured out. And that makes total sense to me. I think that's the only way it can be or else there would be no hope left in the world. Now there is a difference, says the Lord, between the end time judgments which take place in the overall end time period under the six trumpets and the final wrath which is poured out in fury and indignation by the seven vials. The trumpet judgments are designed to bring warning and incline the hearts of many to righteousness. They are remedial in nature. Set the trumpet to thy mouth, David Wilkerson wrote in 1973. He was a sounding trumpet, and everything he prophesied in that book has come to pass. But we all had many years to hear the trumpet sounds and to prepare ourselves. But did we? I'm afraid many didn't. Coupled with a great outpouring of my spirit, they shall work to move great numbers to repentance. See, I was part of that charismatic movement in, in the 70s, the end part of it, but I was part of a great outpouring of the spirit. And that's when I came in, in 1977. 
They shall work to move great numbers to repentance and cause them to be born into the kingdom. But the final vials of wrath are designed to sweep clean the earth of all final rebellion and wickedness. When they begin to fall, it will be too late for repentance. As I said, remember, too late for repentance. They cannot repent because they don't see sin. They, they call evil good and good evil. So they cannot repent. All who have not cried out to their God in the tribulation period will be destroyed from the earth in the judgments of the seven vials. All who have not cried out to their God in the tribulation period will be destroyed from the earth in the judgments of the seven vials. Speaking of that time, the inspired writer exclaims, And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come. Revelation eleven eighteen, With reference to the seven angels who have these seven last plagues, it is said, For in them is filled up the wrath of God. That's chapter 15, verse 1 of Revelation. And they are instructed to go and pour out the vials of the wrath of God on the earth in Revelation 16, 1. It has already been pointed out that the seven vials of wrath come only after the saints have been translated and caught up to be with the Lord. This is pictured in the vision which John saw of those who were standing on a sea of glass and singing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. That's in Revelation 15, verses 2 and 3. Only the overcomers know that song. It's the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. It's the song it's the it's the song of justice and mercy. The overcomer has to be fully prepared to exercise justice with a heart of mercy. That's Revelation 15, verses 2 and 3. The song of Moses was sung by the Israelites after they have been completely delivered out of Egypt and from the power of Pharaoh. Egypt is a type of this world. Even so shall I deliver a great host in that day by causing them to be taken out of the world and translated from that which is earthly to that which is heavenly. They shall then be taken into the highest heaven and introduced to the Father in the temple of heaven. At the same time, the seven angels will be pouring out their vials of wrath upon the earth. This is why the temple is seen as being opened in heaven as these things are ready to be fulfilled. That's in Revelation eleven nineteen and fifteen five. The seven angels with the seven vials are seen coming out of the temple in fifteen six, and a voice out of the temple then charges them to begin pouring out their vials of wrath on the earth in 16.1. The temple which is open to emit the final wrath of God is also open to welcome the redeemed of God. But they are allowed to enter only after the seven plagues have seen their initial fulfillment on the earth in Revelation 15.8. Thus there will be two suppers taking place at the same time, the marriage supper of the Lamb in the temple of heaven, that's 19.7-9, and the great supper of human flesh on the earth, 19, 17 through 18. The entrance of the redeemed saints into the temple in heaven will be the final fulfillment of the great day of atonement. Remember I mentioned to you, today is the day of atonement in this year, 2020. The entrance of the redeemed saints into the temple in heaven will be the final fulfillment of the great day of atonement as those who have been hid with Christ in God according to Colossians 2 3 shall enter into their full liberty in Christ being made ready to rule and reign with him at the same time the great day of atonement will be fulfilled on earth by the greatest bloodbath in human history as the blood of all those who have been martyred for truth's sake is avenged by wrath poured out Revelation 16, 6. Now look with me and behold the fulfillment of the seven vials. First, let me show you a mystery, says the Lord. 
There are seven vials of wrath, even as there are seven trumpets. The trumpets announce the beginning of the judgments of your God during the overall end time period, which we've been in now for the last generation. But the vials of wrath consummate this judgment period and bring the fullness of the wrath of God on the earth. Now here, the seven trumpets are closely related to the seven vials. As a matter of fact, Let's read that again. Now look with me and behold the fulfillment of the seven vials. First, let me show you a mystery, says the Lord. There are seven vials of wrath, even as there are seven trumpets. The trumpets announce the beginning of the judgments of your God during the overall end time period. But the vials of wrath consummate this judgment per period and bring the fullness of the wrath of God on the earth. <clears throat> now here. The seven trumpets are closely related to the seven vials. As a matter of fact, the seven vials are a con consummating extension of the seven trumpets and actually carry out the final force of their blowing. Thus, you will notice a correspondence and symbolism between trumpet one and vial one, trumpet two and vial two, and so on throughout the seven trumpets and seven vials. I would recommend that you all go to your Bibles and read through um, each one of these because it is very interesting how they correspond. Now let us look at the first vial in relation to the first trumpet. You've already been shown in a previous prophecy how the first trumpet unleashed the firepower of the Adam and how this firepower shall be used mightily to bring great judgment on the earth. It is the full fury of the Adam's destruction that is unleashed by the first vial. And it is the various effects of this destructive power on the inhabitants of the earth that is the primary theme of the entire seven vials. Think not that the vials of wrath are supernatural outpourings from heaven. They are the result of that which man set in motion and are the consequence of his wanton disobedience returning on his own head. All the vials are implemented in and through men. It will simply be the overruling providence of your God which will cause the final judgments of wrath to be directed in the places and in the manner that he shall deem fitting. <clears throat> the first vial. As the first angel pours his vial of wrath on the earth, it causes a foul and loathsome sore on the men which had the mark of the beast and on them which worshipped his image. Revelation 16.2 Is not this the effect of atomic explosion and radiation? Even as those who are seen by John in heaven had gotten the victory over the beast and his image in 15.2, so those on earth who have upheld the beast and his system shall experience a noble defeat. Atomic bombs shall be used by several nations in the final battle of the ages. The earth shall reel to and fro under the impact of these immense explosions. See Isaiah 24.20 Thus it will be fulfilled that I shall destroy those who are destroying the earth. According to Revelation 11.18 The word translated destroy would be more accurately translated corrupt or through corrupt. It refers to the contamination of the Earth's atmosphere with atomic radiation. Those who are so corrupted, <clears throat> those who have so corrupted or polluted the air, and will do so on a much greater scale by their indiscriminate use of atomic devices and bombs in the final conflict, shall themselves feel the effects of such corruption. Terrible radiation sores shall affect all who are not supernaturally protected by the power of God. This is the meaning of the first vial of wrath. The second vial. Now look with me at the second vial. Is it not written that the second angel poured out his vial on the sea? In 16.3, you will notice a correspondence with the second trumpet, where a great mountain is seen falling into the sea 
in 8.8. The sea is a type of peoples in agitation and revolution. In a previous prophecy, you were given to see the fulfillment of this under the second trumpet in the nation of America and that which will arise within her borders. This is primarily because of the great judgment that is to come on America, because she has sinned against such great light and opportunity. But think not that chaos through revolution shall take place only in the United States. America is particularly pinpointed because of her position and world leadership and the intensity of the struggle which shall come within, causing repercussions around the world. The struggle which shall come within. Just think of the struggle within this nation right now. On the eve of the election between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, where we're seeing, already seeing rampant voter fraud by the Democrats. It's just unbelievable. Most nations shall reel under the impact of revolution within. This chaos through revolution shall continue even to the end. It will be stayed for a time because of the power of dictatorial governments which shall arise to bring the nations into subjection to the beast powers. But after the final conflict begins, it will flare up with renewed force until many nations will become shambles of chaos and confusion. Especially at the last shall many die because of the attempt to restore order by those who will be ruthless beyond imagination. This will be the fulfillment of the second vial as the sea becomes as the blood of a dead man and every living soul dies in the sea. In other words, every living person who continues in the sea of revolt will be immediately destroyed. Such drastic steps will be necessary for governments and nations to even be able to continue their existence. That's a sober warning. The third vial. Now consider and I will show you the third vial of wrath. Is it not written that the third angel poured out his vial on the rivers and fountains of waters? I have already shown in a previous prophecy how the third trumpet affects the rivers and fountains of waters by the star which was called Wormwood in Revelation 8, 10, and 11. It was given to you to see the fulfillment of this and the infection of the educated classes and leaders with the false ideology of communism and the eventual flow of the communist fallacy to the common people through these infected leaders, even as rivers and springs of waters eventually flow into the seas and larger bodies of water. This is really profound. See, I, I read this years ago and just read it again for the first time after a long time today. Since, um, I think since Donald Trump has been president. And isn't it interesting that you are seeing communism in just full-blown in the opposition to Donald Trump? Now note, says the Lord, that the judgment of the third vial falls on these same leaders who have been responsible for perpetrating the communist fraud. In that these waters became blood, in 16.4, it shows that those throughout the world who have led others into deception and ultimate destruction through the communist conspiracy shall themselves be destroyed. And since they have been guilty of trying to destroy the influence of Christianity, shedding the blood of saints and prophets, as you see in Revelation 16.6, 6, they shall be forced to drink of the same seeing their cause destroyed and their lives snuffed out. And so it is written that the angel of the water says, You are righteous, O Lord, who is and who was and shall be, because you have judged thus. This judgment shall come at the time when it is apparent that the communist cause is lost and wholesale destruction from atomic weapons is taking place. Many communist leaders will take their own lives. Others will suffer violence at the hands of those who have suffered their indignities. And others will simply be destroyed by the blasts of atomic bombs. The fourth vial. Shall I not show you the fourth vial, says the Lord? In the revelation of the fourth trumpet is a pre in a previous prophecy, you were given to behold how the sun was darkened <clears throat> in 812. 
and the fulfillment which is to take place on the continent of Europe as the sun, or Christianity in its traditional forms as supported by the state, is to be completely disrupted. This is the preliminary judgment upon the apostasies of church-state Christianity. Now look with me to the final judgment as poured out by the fourth vial of wrath. The fourth angel pours out his vial on the same sun that was darkened under the fourth trumpet. But this time the result is the scorching of men with fire. In 16.8, this is that which shall befall the inhabitants of Europe. For great shall be the destruction on that continent, as fire from the atomic explosions devastates many areas. Those who are not destroyed by being incinerated shall be scorched by the firepower. The result is that they blaspheme the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they repent not to give him glory. <clears throat> In 16.9, those who have not repented during the judgments of the tribulation period remain unrelenting in their obstinacy to the end. The fifth file. Now you will notice, says the Lord, that the fifth angel pours his vial on the seat of the beast. As shown you in a previous prophecy, the fifth trumpet brought about the release of numerous hosts of Satan from the pit. A part of the activity of these spirits is to take captive the minds of certain men in high places who will be used to precipitate the world into titanic conflict. These men are primarily those who are behind the communist conspiracy to enslave the world under atheistic dictatorship. Thus, the fifth vial brings retribution to the beast and his kingdom. In 1610, especially shall those who have held out in stubborn support of the beast of communism and its image of world socialist government be the object of wrath from on high. The Lord your God shall providentially cause certain events to turn against the communist purveyors of anti-God society just when they think that they are going to succeed in their quest for world domination. That was 2016. That's exactly what happened in 2016 with the election of Donald Trump. And that's why they hate him so much. Because they knew he was not going along with them and would not go along with them. For my spirit will be working mightily, especially in the Christian nations of the West. And mighty miracles will be performed, which will cause consternation to enter the hearts of the world government forces. In the process of time, a split will develop between the East and the West, which will lead to inevitable conflict. All-out war will be the result. Look at what's happening today with respect to America and China. All-out war will be the result. Men's minds will have been so completely taken captive by Satan that they will not turn back from a war in which there can be no decisive winner. But I will cause the tide of battle, battle to be turned against the beast nations, and they shall be caught in a web of their own making. Then shall the full fury of atomic destruction fall on them as I cause those nations of the West who have extricated themselves from the beast system to use secret maneuvers that are made known to them through my special messengers. So that will be through angels or through the Kodashim, who will have been glorified by this time. For truly I say to you, this turning back of the beast empire to complete destruction shall begin shortly before my saints are taken to me. Then shall it consummate in full fury as the vials of wrath are poured out following the lifting of my saints out of the world. Thus it is written that the kingdom of the beast was full of darkness and they gnawed their tongues for pain. In 1610, the darkness will be both literal and symbolic. Total power failures will bring much literal darkness, and the symbolic darkness will be the total despair coupled with anguish and intense suffering because of the bitter hatred and resentment which will arise in the hearts of those who have been completely sold out to their depraved ways. It is said that they blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and they repented not of their deeds. Revelation 16, 11. 
The sixth vial. Now look to me, says the Lord, and I will show you the mystery of the sixth vial of wrath. The sixth angel poured out his vial on the great river Euphrates. And the waters thereof were dried up, that the way might be prepared for the kings of the east, according to 16, verse 12. In the previous prophecy on the trumpets, you were shown the loosing of the four angels who were bound in the river Euphrates and the eventual going forth of armies because of this. The going forth of armies from the lands of the east is symbolically pictured in the scripture by the overflow of the, of the banks of the river Euphrates. For example, see Isaiah 8, verses 6 through 8. Therefore, the drying up of the waters of the Euphrates as a result of the sixth vial being poured out would indicate the turning back of armies to their destruction. Before this is accomplished, there is the gathering together of the armies of the east as well as all armies to a place called Armageddon in 1616. Although the city of Megiddo, to which the expression Armageddon refers, was situated on the edge of the Great Plain where many great battles were fought in ancient times, the end time gathering is primarily symbolic. It's the battle for the mind. <clears throat> what happened at one of the battles at Megiddo was when J.L. pierced the skull of the king. I'm not maybe Jabin. It was a king that had fought against Israel and a woman brought victory and put a spike to his temple and drove it through. Symbolic of Christ crushing the skull of Satan. It's the battle for the mind. Armageddon is a symbolic appellation of the final conflict of the ages. We have been involved in the battle of the mind. MK Ultra and all the evils that have come with that and all of the propaganda that has gone forward in these last years to deceive us has all been a battle of the mind. And only those who have, only those who have love the truth, have been able to prevail in this battle. Now the sixth vial has primarily to do with the final stages of this great conflict, the drying up of the river Euphrates, or the complete destruction of the armies of the east who are under the banner of the beast. This is also symbolically portrayed as preparing the way of the kings of the east. Now, I believe that this is the sixth, or I'm sorry, the seventh beast. And that trump is the eighth. So you really have, you still have this battle between beasts going in that the, the seventh beast is you could think of in terms of Babylon the Great. The Babylon the Great, it's those that are part of the seventh beast. Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, Joe Biden, all of those people who are associated with this one world government that's trying to defeat Trump is part of that seventh beast and also Babylon the Great. I'm going to start with that paragraph again. Now, the sixth vial has primarily to do with the final stages of this great conflict, the drying up of the river Euphrates, or the complete destruction of the armies of the east who are under the banner of the beast. This is also symbolically portrayed as preparing the way of the kings of the east. This means that the way might be prepared for their destruction. And this is brought about by the drying up or turning back of their armies in confusion and defeat. Now note, says the Lord, in order to present a more complete picture of the how and why of this final conflict, the inspired apostle is given to see that which has led up to this final conflict and the forces which have been instrumental in gathering the nations to battle. The gathering is not a part of the sixth vial, but is portrayed to John 
at the time he sees the sixth vial poured out, that the mystery of the gathering to Armageddon might be understood in relation to the destruction of the armies of the east. John is given to see the mysterious forces which gather to Armageddon as three unclean spirits, like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Frogs are creatures of the water which are perpetually croaking in the darkness of night. The water speaks of things of the soul, those things which lurk deep within the desire nature of reprobate man. The croaking indicates that which is spoken in the form of lying propaganda, which is the product of man's darkness apart from the light of divine truth. All of this is the result of unclean spirits of Satan working to subvert man into ways of exploitation, lust for power, and eventual bloodshed. There are three ideologies closely related, yet with separate emphases and related to different power blocks that are leading the nations to certain conflict. That which comes out of the mouth of the dragon is fascism. That which comes out of the mouth of the beast is communism. And that which comes out of the mouth of the false prophet is socialism. They are all systems which emphasize the deifying of the powers of autocratic rule. They recognize no rights of the individual as divinely given by the creator. They are destructive of individual responsibility before the God of all flesh. They breed moral degeneracy and spiritual insipidness. They lead to the inevitable conflict and chaos. Not being of your God, they cannot last. They will either collapse under their own perverted weight amidst much bloodshed, or they will die in agonizing conflict with each other. The inspired apostle says they are the spirits of devils working signs which go forth to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty in 1614. So think in terms of what you're seeing these days. Antifa, Black Lives Matter, they are fascist, communist, totalitarian groups of people who think nothing of killing and destroying. Now when, says the Lord, is that great day? If it can be shown when that great day of the Lord is, then the time can be revealed when the gathering of the nations of Armageddon, to Armageddon intensifies its pace. The symbolic gathering of the nations has been going on now for many years, ever since the implementation of the ideologies mentioned began in earnest. Okay, back, think in terms of the First and Second World Wars, and then of the Cold War, and all of the propaganda that we have heard in the last 70 years. MK Ultra, CIA, think in terms of the false flag attacks, 911, uh, the landing on the moon, so many things. Thus, from one perspective, the day of the Lord has already begun to dawn. Now, remember, he said this back in around 1967. So, it's more than begun to dawn now, all right? But there is a specific point at which it can be said that the day of the Lord has arrived. When is it, says the Lord? The key is found in the scriptural statement following the reference to the great day of God Almighty. It is as follows. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. That's in Revelation 16, 15, and it's really quite amazing when you think of it because it comes in the midst of these vials of wrath judgments. So this is the time for us to be ready. <clears throat> is it not written that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night? 1 Thessalonians 5, 2. Thus it is written that both the Lord Jesus and his day come as a thief. It has already been revealed to you in a previous prophecy that the Lord's coming is synonymous with the blowing of the seventh trumpet. But his coming is first as a thief to break through the household of the church, see Luke 12, 39, and remove the jewels, according to Malachi 3:17. These are the 144,000 first fruits 
according to Revelation 14, verse 1, who will be translated, that means glorified, at the beginning of the tribulation. The Lord does not openly manifest himself at this time. You must understand this. <clears throat> the Lord does not openly manifest himself at the beginning of the tribulation. But we need to be ready at the beginning of the tribulation so that we might be one of these 144,000. The Lord does not openly manifest himself at this time for it is the beginning of his three and a half year perusia or presence unseen by human eyes. Therefore know that when 144,000 of the choicest of saints suddenly disappear, the day of the Lord has begun. The seventh trumpet has begun to blow. Then shall the pace quicken in the gathering of the nations to the final conflict. It will be the great day of God Almighty because of the greatness of that which he will manifest in spiritual power and glory through his saints on the earth. And it will also be great because of the exceeding greatness of his might which shall be unleashed in the Adam's awesome firepower. It is the great day of God Almighty because the great God and Savior shall exercise his almighty power in putting down the impudence and haughtiness of man. For it <clears throat> for is not is it not written that quote, the day of the Lord of hosts shall be on everyone that is proud and lofty, and on everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. Is it not also written that the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day? That's Isaiah two, verses eleven and twelve. Having seen the armies of the beast turned back by the drying up of the river Euphrates as a result of the sixth vial, there yet remains in this prophetic picture just the last agonizing phase of the atomic holocaust, which rages through the seven vials of wrath. Armageddon, which symbolically denotes the entire east-west conflict, both during the tribulation consummation of the trumpets and the final vials of wrath, wrath will then be over. When the seventh angel pours out his vial into the air, there comes a voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. In 1617, this is because the seventh vial is synonymous with the visible return of the Lord. It is his personal return that causes the final wrath to be poured out. He comes to tread the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of God Almighty, according to Revelation 19.15. And if you go to the chapter 19, you see that he comes back with his saints. You see the saints coming at this time. You see the Kodeshim. You see his army. He is to be revealed in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to 2 Thessalonians 1.8. The fire of atomic destruction will still be raging as he returns to put an end to man's insanity, lest all flesh would be destroyed according to Matthew 24, verse 22. The seventh vial. In the account of the seventh and last vial, it is written that there were voices and thunders and lightnings and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were on the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. Revelation 16, 18. This great earthquake will be caused by the touching of his feet on the Mount of Olives, which will split in the midst Zechariah 14.4. There shall be shakings and eruptions throughout the earth, causing many changes in the topography of most land masses. Islands and mountains shall flee away and not be found. Revelation 16.20. The continuing effect of atomic heat causing great amounts of water to be vaporized and frozen in the lofty heights above is seen in the fact that there fell on men a great hail out of heaven. 16.21. Even in their death agonies, the unrepentant blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail. Revelation 16, 21. There is yet one more thing to notice in this final vial of wrath. The scripture says the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give to her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Remember now Jeremiah chapter 25. Last of all, Babylon shall drink. 
The city, which is divided into three parts, represents the three aspects of the worldwide system of Babylon, the religious, the political, and the commercial. Babylon is the symbolic designation of all that is of man, his ways, and his works. And as I've taught in my series on the mystery of the beast, man's ways and works that were inspired by Satan. It is the satanic government that rules the earth. <clears throat> that which is of man always brings tyranny and oppression in one way or another. For millennia, man has suffered the inhumanity of man by means of the iniquitous systems known as Babylon. Therefore, Babylon is remembered and must drink of the wine of his wrath. As I have unveiled to you the meaning of the seven vials of wrath, it would appear that the picture is a negative one, but the contrary is true. The overtones are definitely positive. Consider, says the Lord, what you would do if you wanted to build a beautiful building on a certain site, yet the site is cluttered with the remains of an old, broken, and decayed building with much rubbish and debris accumulated. Would you not tear down the old building, burn its remains, and clear away the rubbish and debris? Man's ways and man's Babylonian systems, as well as rebellious man himself, is represented by the old building, broken and rotten to the core, unredeemable in his present state. I have purposed to usher in a golden age of righteousness and peace, a society builded by God and not by man. Therefore, the seven vials of wrath are designed to clear away all that is of man's evil designs and prepare the way for a world of righteousness. A remnant of all nations will be protected and preserved through the vials of wrath. They are the ones who have called on the name of the Lord that they might be saved or preserved. In Western nations where a larger portion of the population is Christian, many more will be preserved from death. Think not that all Christians are to be taken when the Lord returns for his Kodeshim, his saints. Only those fully sanctified or separated to him by a complete work of his spirit will be ready for entrance into the heavenly kingdom. These are the 100-fold or the full grain in the ear Christians. See Mark 4.20 and 4.28. The 30-fold and 60-fold or the blade and the, and the ear Christians will remain on the earth. Leland Earls has a lot of teaching on this, and I would advise you to read what he says about it. Very good. Shortly after the glorified saints return with the Lord, they will take up their posts of responsibility to shepherd and govern the inhabitants of the earth. Then shall righteousness begin to flourish, and the knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall fill the earth as the waters cover the sea, according to Habakkuk 2.14. So you see, my people, why I must visit the earth and sweep away the refuge of lies, according to Isaiah 28.17. And begin to build that which is founded in truth. Therefore know that your days are numbered, for surely I will fulfill that which I have spoken. End of Leland Earl's prophecy. And I want to leave you with this scripture from Isaiah 32, which speaks of this that I just read from the prophecy. Isaiah 32, Behold, a king will reign in righteousness. Who is that king? Jesus. And princes will rule in justice. Who are the princes? Remember, Jesus is the firstborn among many brothers. These princes are the brothers of Christ. These princes are the Kodeshim. These princes are the first fruits. These princes are the 144,000 who are given particular jurisdictions in this earth to rule. Some with one city, some with ten. Each will be a hiding place from the wind a shelter from the storm. Each what? Each prince. See, behold, a king will reign in righteousness and all the princes will rule under the authority of that king, King Jesus. 
and each prince will be like a hiding place from the wind, a shelter from the storm, like streams of water in a dry place, like the shade of a great rock in a weary land. Then the eyes of those who see will not be closed, and the ears of those who hear will give attention for a change. The heart of the hasty will understand and know, and the tongue of the stammerers will hasten to speak distinctly. The fool will no longer be called noble, nor the scoundrel said to be honorable. Today we call all the politicians and all the judges the honorable so-and-so, and and many of these men are not honorable. The fool will no longer be called noble, and the scoundrel will no longer be said to be honorable. For the fool speaks folly, and his heart is busy with iniquity, to practice ungodliness, to utter error concerning the Lord, to leave the craving of the hungry unsatisfied, and to deprive the thirsty of drink. As for the scoundrel, his devices are evil. He plans wicked schemes to ruin the poor with lying words, even when the plea of the needy is right. But he who is noble plans noble things, and on noble things he stands. That's the Kodeshim. The time has now come. The Kodeshim are about to be glorified. Those who have died before will be raised from the dead first. And then those who are alive and are left, as Paul says, will be glorified and meet the Lord in the air. The Kodeshim will receive glorified bodies and they will walk in the power that Jesus himself walks in. They will have creative power. The Kodeshim will be able to restore and to heal the land. They will be able to bring something beautiful out of what men have destroyed. And thus we live at that time in which the cup of wrath must come because men can no longer repent. They call evil good and they call good evil. And they have to be destroyed so that the kingdom of God can then be raised up in righteousness, in holiness, and in justice.